Welcome back. It's the HHC Mortar Platoon, the 2nd Battalion, 327th Infantry Regiment, no slack. This is the How to Mortar 101 Virtual Class Series. Today's class, Mortars in the Offense. I'm Staff Sergeant Nolan Hommel. References for this class are ATP 3-21.8, FM 3-21.21, and FM 7-90. To start, Mortars in the Offense. Offensive operations. An offensive operation is an operation to defeat or destroy enemy forces and gain control of terrain, resources, and popular population centers. Offensive operations impose a commander's will on the enemy and are the most direct means of seizing, retaining, and exploiting the initiative to gain a physical and psychological advantage. Mortar units are used to support the maneuver force during offensive operations. And two. Destroy or neutralize enemy units. Suppress an enemy's observation and fire. Fix an enemy. And provide close supporting fires for the assault. Destroying or neutralizing takes place with well-placed fires, taking away the enemy ability or will to fight. Suppressing an enemy's observation of fire. Suppression with HE, Willy P, shuts down enemy defensive positions and screens friendly movement to the enemy. To fix an enemy is to hold an enemy in place with fires in preparation for an offensive assault. Leading up to and beyond the objective, a commander will generally use 60, 81, and 120 millimeter systems along with other IDF and air assets to provide close supporting fires for the assault. Characteristics of the offense. Acronym SCAT, meaning surprise, concentration, audacity, and tempo. To surprise means attacking an enemy when at a time or place when he's not ready. Concentration, using timing, speed, and precision maneuver and positioning to concentrate all available combat power from one objective to another quickly and effectively. Audacity, a simple plan of action that's boldly and violently executed. A key element to any offensive operation, audacity increases the chances of surprise and inspires soldiers to overcome adversity in the face of danger. Tempo, the ability to adjust the rate of the operations relative to the battlefield situation, given the enemy's ability to react. Maintaining synchronization between subordinate elements is key to the battlefield tempo. These characteristics used as one allow for successful violent actions against enemy forces. The main purpose of the offense is to defeat, destroy, or neutralize the enemy force. Fires from mortars are integrated with all available direct and indirect fires to support a commander's scheme maneuver. Mortar units participate in offensive operations as part of a larger force. Offensive operations include movement to contact, attack, exploitation, and pursuit. Note, in this block of instruction we will cover our role as indirect fire infantrymen through the above mentioned offensive operations. Movement to contact, an offensive operation designed to develop the situation and to establish or regain contact. The goal, to make initial contact with a small element while retaining enough combat power to develop the situation and mitigate the associated risk. Lowering risk creates favorable conditions for further tactical action. Commanders conduct a movement to contact when an enemy situation is vague or not specific enough to conduct an attack. This may result in an engagement with the enemy. Once contact is made with the enemy, the commander has five options. Attack, defend in place, bypass the enemy, delaying the enemy from advancing, or withdrawing or breaking contact. Some examples of an attack include ambush, counterattack, demonstration and fate, raid, and spoiling attack. All of these will be covered in the following slides. Mortars and movement to contact. Mortars provide a maneuver commander the most responsive means of indirect fire support during a movement to contact. We must be able to quickly and efficiently move from firing locations to support every movement of maneuver elements. Displacement techniques. Given the distance to be traveled, the likelihood of enemy contact, and the maneuver commander's guidance, we will move or displace using split section techniques providing continuous fire support for multiple squad elements or move closely behind the maneuver element as a platoon. 
procedures. While moving, we must be able to quickly in place and accurately engage targets using direct lay, direct alignment, or hip shoot techniques. Given the abilities of 60 and 81 millimeter systems, moving with or closely behind maneuver elements, immediate suppression or destruction of enemy elements is favorable at close and long range. Also, we must be able to quickly employ direct fire weapons depending on the range of the engagement. Considerations. Targets will be planned given decisive terrain, known enemy locations, high speed enemy avenues of approach, possible enemy OPs, and also covering the maneuver elements exposed flanks. Be prepared to frequently move and conduct hip shoots as well as fi firing simultaneous missions. Constant communication to the commander provide a better understanding of how we can best be used in a changing situation, our security, and also how to best allocate available rounds and coordinate resupply. Attack. A type of offensive operation. Examples were given earlier. Ambush, counterattack, raid, demonstration and feint, and spoiling task. These destroy or defeat enemy forces, seize and secure terrain, or both. Attacks incorporate coordinated movement supported by fires. An attack may be characterized as hasty or deliberate, depending on the time available for assessing the situation, planning, and preparing. An attack differs from a movement to contact because in an attack, commanders know at least part of an enemy's dispositions. This knowledge enables commanders to better synchronize and employ combat power. Hasty attack provides little or no time for planning additional fire support, attacking targets of opportunity, long preparations increasing a unit's vulnerability to counter fire. Some characteristics, short and intense fire missions, immediate suppression and immediate smoke, Rapid shift or mass fires to exploit identified enemy weak points. Deliberate. Deliberate attacks allow for more planning time, detailed intelligence, and detailed scheme and maneuver to include the plan for fire support. Some characteristics of deliberate. Dug in, well camouflaged mortar firing positions, firing missions at the lowest charge and elevation, which allows for reduced risk of enemy radar and counter fire abilities. Frequent displacements to include firing missions from unprepared positions and then displacing to the prepared positions. Independent split section operations and massed fires from multiple sections. Types of attack. Ambush. An ambush is an attack by fire or other destructive means from concealed positions on a moving or temporarily halted enemy. An ambush stops, denies, or destroys enemy forces with the element of surprise. During ambushes, mortar units can support the maneuver force by any of the following. Isolating an objective or kill zone, destroying or suppressing nearby enemy reaction forces, destroying an enemy within the kill zone. In a vehicular ambush, mortars can be used to force an enemy to button up or provide illumination and cover friendly movement after an attack. Counterattack. An attack by part or all of defending force against an enemy attacking force. To regain ground, cut off or destroy enemy advance units. As mortars, we are called upon to fire on enemy IDF assets as well as advancing enemy. Raid. An operation to temporarily seize an area to secure information, capture personnel or equipment, or to destroy withdrawal capabilities. Any mortar system can be used to soften the objective. Destroy equipment and fortify positions and are used beyond the objective to fix the enemy or stop withdrawal. A spoiling attack. A tactical maneuver used to impair a hostile attack while the enemy is in the process of assembling. The objective is to disrupt the enemy's offensive capabilities and timelines while destroying personnel and equipment. This is an example of harassment fires that the mortar platoon or sections can be integrated into. We would be called upon to fire on enemy targets such as essential equipment, Personnel and routes, disrupting the enemy's preparations, destroying key assets, fire support systems, and gain time to plan further offensive operation. Demonstration and feint. Our capabilities are used to demonstrate force to deter the enemy and to deceive the enemy of the location or time of the offensive action. Forcing the enemy to move to fire support assets to locations that cannot immediately impact the decisive operation. Mortar fires are used by the commander as the main factor in deception and demonstration of force. 
in the area of operations. Deception fires, or feint. In military deception, an offensive action involving contact with the adversary conducted for the purpose of deceiving the advers adversary as to the location and or the time of the actual main offensive action. Methods of deceptive fires. Roving gun. A roving mortar, generally two gun, can conduct fire missions from a number of supplementary positions adjacent to the platoon's main MFP. This conceals the platoon's primary position, confuses the enemy as to the number of mortar sections or tubes employed. A platoon vacates these supplementary firing positions upon completion of a specific mission, further confusing the enemy as to where fires are coming from. Deception smoke. Deception smoke is employed to create the illusion that a tactically significant event is occurring to confuse the enemy. Deceptive smoke from mortars can be used in river crossings, withdrawals, and air assault operations. False infiltration. Firing HE or Willy P to prep or screen false infiltration points or false friendly movement forces, to, forces the enemy to move or shift its fire assets to those locations. This allows for friendly movement into decisive offensive areas. An example of a false infiltration. False air assault, HLZ. Mortar assets, shoot Willy P on grid location, Delta Fox. One, two, three, four, five, six. This causes the enemy to shift reinforcements at that time to the immediate area in order to block friendly movement. Friendly forces will then air assault into grid Delta Fox, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero allowing for sec successful infill into this decisive area. This weakens enemy defenses and gains time for friendly maneuver. Exploitation. Exploitation is a type of offensive operation that usually follows a successful attack and is designed to disorganize the enemy in depth, destroying its forces to no other alternative but to surrender or retreat. This type of operation moves very quickly, requiring us to move rapidly and violently. Through the speed that an exploitation is conducted, we may move by platoon or section with or just behind the maneuver element. The majority of fire missions received during an exploitation are conducted using hip shoot or direct lay techniques. 81mm and 60mm teams are heavily utilized, being they can in place and displace very quickly and are very commonly the only fire's assets available. 60 millimeter being able to shoot handheld configuration allows for immediate suppression of small enemy elements along weaker fronts. Considerations. More missions from any direction, so plan for 360 degree fires. Increased requirement for mortar element local security, frequent displacements and moving with maneuver elements. Mortar unit leaders maintain good situational awareness and anticipate maneuver elements needs for fire support. Pursuit. Pursuit is a type of offensive operation designed to catch or cut off a hostile force attempting to escape with the goal of destroying it. A pursuit normally follows a successful exploitation. However, if enemy resistance breaks down and forces begin fleeing the battlefield, any offensive operation can transition into a pursuit. Even more so than during an exploitation, mortars bait may be a maneuver commander's only means of indirect fire support. We will position ourselves to provide continuous fire support throughout the operation and beyond the objective. Considerations. Be cognizant of ammunition consumption during a pursuit due to the higher difficulty of resupply. Sections and squads generally cover greater distances between mortar firing positions and are prepared to fire most missions using emergency firing techniques. Preparation fires. Preparation fire is a high volume of fires delivered over a short period of time to maximize the surprise and shock effect. Fires normally begin before and may extend beyond the duration of the attack depending on the ammo supply. Prepping the objective for an assault. Example, phase one provides for the early attack of enemy indirect fire support assets and observation capabilities. These targets are the slowest to recover. This degrades an enemy's ability to react with indirect fires and to gain intelligence about the friendly force. A battalion mortar platoon may play a major role in this phase of preparatory fires. Mortars may contribute 
to the counterfire program to free artillery and to aid suppression of enemy air defenses. Phase two, concentrates on identified CPs, communications positions, assembly areas, and reserves. The goal is degradation of an enemy's ability to reinforce their defense and shift forces to counter the main attack. Mortar targets are based on weapons capabilities. Phase three, concentrates on the forward portions of an enemy defensive area and targets that pose an immediate threat to attacking troops. The purpose of this phase is to suppress and obscure enemy direct fire systems until the assault force has closed with them. Mortar fires are most likely used during this phase, especially against enemy reverse slope positions, which can only be reached by high angles of fire. Offensive sequence. As an overview of offensive operations as a whole, we will gain and maintain the initiative through our actions. Deliberate planning allows us to keep constant pressure on enemy forces throughout the area of operation. We transition from one offensive action to the next without pause. Planning and preparing for the next operation and for follow-on operations occur simultaneously with the execution of the current mission. Having a deliberate plan for any offensive operation allows for quick, minor adjustments as the battlefield situation develops. Risk Estimated Distance, or RED. RED takes into account the bursting radius of munitions and characteristics of the delivery system. Examples are mortars and artillery. It associates this combination with a probability of incapacitation for friendly personnel at a given range. RED is the minimum distance at which friendly troops can approach friendly fires without 0.1% or more probability of incapacitation. Essentially, it's the calculated risk of harming friendly forces when firing over or in close proximity of them. Example, movement to contact. An example of echelon, echelon fires, engagement area development, and reds when maneuvering on an objective. Step one, troops begin movement toward an objective while close air support is called on the objective. Step two, troops continue forward movement until specific phase line when close air support clears the airspace. After they've cleared the airspace, this triggers a call for 155 artillery fires on the objective. Troops reach the red for 155 millimeter fires. 155s lift and shift their fires, triggering 120 mortars to begin firing on the objective. Troops reach the red for 120 mortars. The 120 mortar fires lift or shift, triggering 60 millimeter mortars to fire on the objective. After the troops have reached the red for 60 millimeter mortars, immediately triggering direct fire weapons on the objective from a support by fire position. The maneuver force assaults with small arms and seizes the objective. Platoon attack echelon of fires example. In this example, three alpha will conduct an attack on an enemy position. Attached to them is a battalion mortar section from the line of departure labeled with LD. Three alpha will move from phase line to phase line while the mortar section engages the objective and screens friendly maneuver. Upon reaching phase line red, this triggers mortars to fire on target. Whiskey Charlie 2000 screening their advance. Also firing HE to shock and surprise the enemy and to prep the objective. The HE target is Whiskey Charlie 2005. Moving through phase line red to phase line white. Upon the trigger of phase line white, 120 millimeter mortars will lift fire as the red has been reached, roughly 300 meters. This initiates immediate. HE fires from 81 millimeter mortars on target, Whiskey Charlie 2010. Just as between phase line red and white, 81 millimeters will fire continuously until 3 alpha has reached phase line blue. This is the red for 81 millimeter HE. They will lift fire and stand by for follow on missions. 60 millimeter company mortars will then engage the objective, either moving with or slightly behind the maneuvering element. 
their target being labeled as Whiskey Charlie 2015. After reaching phase line blue, 60 millimeters, 60 millimeter mortars will cut off and the company will split, setting in a support by fire and clearing through the objective. Synchronizing fires with phase line triggers allows for quick movement, tempo, and disorganizes the enemy to the point of surrender or retreating the objective. Timing and speed added with precision troop maneuverability allows concentration of all available combat power. Review back through the material and discuss with your squad leader or section sergeant. Prepare for a quiz tomorrow morning before PT. Next class, introduction to operations order. No breather from work, no relief from combat, no request for respite, no slack.